What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TTB Ravens Media, bringing you Ravens content every single day. If you want to see that day of Ravens content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the notification bell as well if you want to get notified every single time I put a brand new video. In this video today, I want to know your guys' thoughts on this Ravens coaching candidate. He has gotten a second interview. Um, we are talking about Mr. Bobby Ingram. I will be talking about other things. Um, you know, in the future, other than just the offensive coordinator. But if you guys have any questions or topics that you want us to cover in the Trust the Bank podcast, we're recording that tomorrow. I'll put out a post tomorrow. But if you want to comment that in today's video, we will talk about them tomorrow. Let's jump right into it. Bobby Ingram. I have no problems with Bobby Ingram other than one simple thing. He's a Harbaugh guy. That's scary. That is scary. Bobby Ingram, former NFL wide receiver. Um, he was actually, I believe, the first player to ever win the Fred, Fred Bolitnikoff Award, which is given to the best wide receiver in college football every year. Um, you know, NFL wide receiver. So, like, you hear wide receiver and you go, yeah, okay. Passing. Like, that's what he's going to be all about. Then you look at his coaching career. He starts off with the uh, Pittsburgh Steel, or starts off with the Niners as an offensive assistant. Then he becomes the wide receivers coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you're like, okay, Steelers wide receivers coach. That's the best team in the NFL at developing wide receivers. He was he was there for like two seasons. Then he became the Ravens wide receiver coach from 2014 to 2018. Here's something scary about that. How good were the Ravens at developing wide receivers in that time frame? They weren't. They weren't good at developing wide receivers. Um, that, that's a little bit scary. Then he became the Ravens tight ends coach uh, from 2019 to 2021. 20, good tight ends. That's when we drafted Mark Andrews and Hayden Hurst. Um, you know, that's when we had Nick Boyle. Very good right there. No issues with the, his ability with the tight ends. Um, and then he was the offensive coordinator last year and quarterbacks coach for the University of Wisconsin. I've talked about this before. I know a lot of you share the same feeling. We want somebody new. We want somebody outside of the circle of Harbaugh. We want somebody outside of the Baltimore Ravens organization. If we are going to go and find ourselves an offensive coordinator, please have them come from a different tree, have them come from a different system, whether it's college, whether they're young, whether they're old, whether it's a you know former, you know, NFL head coach, whether it's, you know, Eric B enemy and other teams, offensive coordinator that you're trying to get. Those are, those are guys that are just so much better than the option of bringing someone from the Baltimore Ravens organization. And now you can look at this and be like, well, it worked with Mike McDonald. Yes, that's true. But he's on the defensive side of the ball. The Ravens are great at getting defensive coordinators. They're great at getting defensive coaches. That is where they excel. That is where they always have excelled throughout the whole history. You know, you go back to like Rex Ryan, you know, very good defensive coordinator. Then you come up and it's like Dean Pease. Dean Pease was unbelievable. Then you had Wink Martindale. Then you had uh, Mike McDonald. That's very good um, at the defensive coordinator position. It's the opposite with the OC, especially under Harbaugh. Ravens have maybe had a couple, maybe two decent offensive coordinators or good offensive coordinators, but they probably had about five bad offensive coordinators underneath Mr. John Harbaugh because he always seems to hire his buddy. Oh man, this is Jim's friend. Oh, this is my friend. Oh, you know, this guy was my, you know, tight ends coach. This guy was my wide receivers coach, whatever it is. And it's like, oh man, I don't want that. I don't think Ravens fans want that. And it's it's especially concerning when it's like, oh, he was the wide receivers coach from 2014 to 2018. Purely because the Ravens were so like we've always complained. 24 like like the Ravens can't develop wide receivers, right? That was a problem. It still is a problem. You know, we have Rashad Bateman, we have Devin Duvernay, we have James Prochet, Tylen Wallace. Young guys that they're just, it doesn't seem like they're developing. Bateman's more about injuries. But, I mean, you have to look at that and be like, okay, what are the Ravens actually doing? If you guys want to know something really interesting, he was our wide receivers coach from 2014 to 2018, right? Ravens drafted a first-round wide receiver in that time frame. 
seen as one of the biggest wide receiver busts of the last 10 years. They drafted uh, Brashad Perriman in the first round of the 2015 NFL draft. How did he develop? He didn't. You know, these were the years of, of Kamar Aiken, of, of, oh, maybe this is the year Michael Campanero is able to take that step. And it was just like consistently nobody's doing anything um, and we're not getting any development. So it's just kind of like, okay, what are what exactly are we even trying to do? Because we're not really advancing. We're not getting players. What's funny, actually, is we drafted Darren Waller that year as well. I just looked it up. Um, but obviously, Darren Waller switched to tight end. Um, you know, the Ravens wide receivers is just, I mean, it, it was just, it was Kamar Aiken, Daniel Brown, Jeremy Butler, Chris Matthews, Chris Givens. Wow. Wow, that's bad. Uh, they had Marlon Brown, Michael Caminero on IR as well. Um, Steve Smith Sr., uh, he was injured that year to finish the year. But, I mean, it's just like, okay, what is the point? Like, like yeah, he's probably interviewing well, but it's just like, this is ridiculous. If the Ravens hire him to be our offensive coordinator, I'm going to be very upset. Not saying he can't work but I'm just very concerned. Now, if we hired him as a tight ends coach, if we hired him as a lower end coach, an assistant coach, um, an assistant to the assistant coach of the offensive coordinator, like I wouldn't be upset with that. Um, if we brought him in to coach tight ends or something like that, you know, I have no problem with that, but to just throw this guy into an offensive coordinator position after one year at Wisconsin, where it's like, okay, how good was Wisconsin uh, this year? I'm actually going to pull up the numbers. Um, bear with me because they're like Wisconsin wasn't crazy good this year. I, I watched college football. Um, they they were not good this year. Let's see. Let's see what their statistics look like this year for college football. They went seven and six. That's not very good. Um, especially for a program like Wisconsin, who typically is able to have good running backs. Um, and, and be able to round the ball. Um, they threw on average uh, 1.6 touchdowns per game, 1.6 rushing touchdowns per game. They were decent in penalties. They, you know, had had some good, you know, running game. But, I mean, their quarterback threw for 2,000 yards, 19 touchdowns, 10 picks. Okay. That's that's a little bit concerning. Uh, in terms of running the football, uh, the running back had 1,200 yards and 11 touchdowns. It just wasn't like some crazy productive offense. You know, we're not bringing in a guy. At least uh, Todd uh, Munkin was able to win the national championship. I know they had a great defense, but the offense was good. Wisconsin threw for 183 passing yards a game. They were 77th in college football in points per game. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. Um, I, I I honestly think that this is the this is the worst candidate. And I'll you know tomorrow we'll talk about everybody um, as well. We'll talk about you know all the other guys that have been brought up. The Ravens actually put out an article on their website if you want to check it or not an article. It's like a slideshow of all the different people that have been announced that the Ravens have been talking with. So if you guys want to check that out, go for it. I, I strongly recommend it. We'll talk about all those players, all those coaches tomorrow. Um, but I got to say Todd Monk or not Todd Munkin. Bobby Ingram is not the guy that I want. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for daily Ravens content. Let me know your thoughts on Bobby Ingram and I'll see all of you again.